Okay. Hello Whoa. and welcome to another Woodshop podcast <laughs> with Mike Coffey of Coffee Custom Builds, Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Hell, Works, Hell. Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop. You can find us all as well as the podcast on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 55 of another shop podcast. Five plus five plus five equals five plus 55. Five five. Numbers guy. Numbers guy. Now, speaking of our non numbers guy, Mike. Wait, what? what? I thought I was also the num- Oh, no, that is Dunlap. Yeah. Hey, this week's episode is brought to you by a website. And that website is called therustytool.com. If you like tools, and ironically, you don't like them to be rusty. You should go to the rustytool.com because they're all fresh and clean. <laughs> so go to the Rusty Tool. They've got all kinds of things. They got your Lagunas, your Mercas, your Odies, your Mixalls, your Epoxy. They got all your stuff there. They got all your stuff needed and it gets shipped to your house. So go check out the rustytool.com. Pete will have the link in the description down below. Uh, go give them some love. They're also on Instagram at the Rusty Tool on Instagram. And that is all I have to say about that. Uh, Pete. Our other sponsors, where do they come from? Oh, they come from our Patreon page. And if you want to help grow the show, get some early access and behind the scenes content, fire content. Grower. <laughs> yep, growing out of shower. We're definitely showing, <laughs> but only to patrons. If you want so- the shower to be a grower, <laughs> you're going to want to go. <laughs> so if you want to help support the show, go check us out on uh, patreon.com slash another woodshop podcast. We greatly appreciate it because it helps us bring you this wonderful content. And everything we're going to be doing for the next 50 years because we're locked in by contract. <laughs> legally binding. We will get bamboo Wait, shoots. Wait, that was a 50? Fingernails. That was a 50 year? Yep, legally yeah, binding. Yeah, we got you again with, we tricked you with the numbers again. <laughs> <laughs> Done laps. We wrote out the numbers. You, you, you guys realize them. in 50 years, I'm going to be 120 years old, right? We actually spelled out 50. That's why you didn't see it. Also, we did not think about that you'd be 150 years old then. So. Or would you say 120? I don't remember. <laughs> Dan in a 70. Uh, hey, Speaking of Patreon, we got a new sponsor of the show this week on our Patreon page. That is Max and Mindy. Uh, it's not loading. Max and Mindy over at Stubby K Studio. So big thanks to them for joining. They are Excuse VIP me. patrons, which is awesome. So we were able to take that $20 from their patron and uh, pay for Vic. That is actually $7,300 Canadian. So we were able to get him on the show last week. So it's big like thank five bucks them. US. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a big, big thanks to them. Uh, we really appreciate them supporting the show. Hey, quick little um, thing that I should have mentioned about Patreon, guys. That's a great way to get in touch, uh, in touch with us. For you know, if you have special questions, if uh, you mm-hmm. know, you want to start a conversation there or whatever, like let us know. You can we haven't comment below the shows. Time. We see all that, uh, and if especially if you guys have some like questions that you think they're even too racy for Instagram, send them over there. Love yeah, I mean, we've we've hosted like questions of like really really specific social media things in the past on there and that has kind of fallen off and i don't think we've mentioned it much so that's really probably on us but we if, blame, if you have like i blame dan he's 70 he probably forgot <laughs> so we uh <laughs> we um we you know if you have questions for us over there we're happy to answer them so get them on here we we used to do it's been a while we used to do after the pre-show we do the patreon section which we didn't we didn't record for anyone but the patrons. So, uh, but we haven't done that in a while. So if you have any yeah. questions that you think we could answer um, that we won't necessarily put on the show, get them in there and we'd love to answer them. If, you, and then if before- you're in the, pre, uh, the, the pre-show patron tier, you if you ask a question, we'll answer it just so you guys and you'll get it in your, basically it'll be at the end of the pre-show. Yeah, exactly. But it's not available to anyone else. Just patrons. You're special. You're special. Because we love you. Uh, I wanted to mention before we get to the end of the show, on the 9th, Izzy Swan will be joining us. That is uh, April 9th. Very excited to have Izzy on the show. That's for those of you in the future. That's April 9th, 2021. Um, and then on April 22nd, that is a Thursday. Uh, Sarah Listy from Tool Girls Garage will be joining us. So we've got some guests lined up and we've got some more after that. We'll get into that down the road. Uh, but oh, for now, one last what? thing. Wait, one more Go. calendar thing. Hit it. Guys, huge holiday coming up for us. We are going to be Day. doing an Arbor Day special. Yep. It's the Arbor be- Day, the Arb Extravaganza is going to be insane. The Arb 
yeah, whether it's so tree related or you have some wobble on your table saw, we're going to talk all things Arbor. You guys, I hate to break it to you, but the uh-huh. birthplace of Arbor Day is right here in Nebraska. Well, you know what? I that might have seems to come like out. A lie. No, it's not. And uh, I, I might have to come out and check it's it out. It's within 45 minutes of my house. That's not, it's like, that's not, I mean, basically another country at that point. Nope. Gold was discovered in my backyard in California. Sure. 45 minutes away. I mean. Somewhere in California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan. Whenever you guys over. come visit oh, me, I'll means. take you there. I can't wait. I cannot, I cannot wait to check that off the list. See oh, the that's... Arbor Day Discovery Site or whatever you, you know, call it. We're just <laughs> saying that for our honeymoon that we haven't done yet, would love to see where Arbor Day started. I, number gotcha. one on the list. It's yeah. the number one honeymoon you know destination. You know what? <laughs> to hell with it. We're booking a flight. Right, Emma? Yeah, we're doing, it. We're doing it live. We're booking a the flight. The Arbor Arb Stravaganza is going to be crazy. Let's get some shirts made. Uh, before we get too far <laughs> into this 2021. Well, I we can get Arbor Tech. Arbor Tech to sponsor, sponsor our Arbor, Arbor Stravaganza. <laughs> hey, there's Christmas specials. Why not Arbor Day? I've never done the math on their name, Arbor Tech. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense now. It's technology for trees. Uh, <laughs> the next, <laughs> the next, well, I guess we kind of jump into, you know, what's on our bench, right? Dan? Yeah. Yeah. What's on your bench? Uh, I've been working on this basement cabinet, uh, thing I, I don't even know how to explain it it's like i'm making cabinets it's a lower that are gonna, it's a lower, lower cabinet and upper cabinets it's going to be turned into a bar so i'm not i'm not making the tops for the cabinets but it's been quite a struggle for me because i've had to spray them white and it's been rainy all week and my shop is small and i don't want to get white paint everywhere yeah for sure so i've had to like dodge the rain and go outside and my driveway's white and my wife is not happy and I'm probably going to get divorced. So this is my yikes. This is expensive <laughs> <piece of> furniture. <laughs> right? No, none of that's true. Just Except before for the... Arbor Day too. God. Oh. Right. You're not supposed to <laughs> paint white before Arbor Day or something. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Or brown Ash before Arbor Day. <laughs> Stop. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm spraying, spraying this stuff white, but the fun thing that happened this week was, I tried a new product by Sherwin Williams, not sponsored. Yep. It's called Kim Aqua. It's a water-based tinted lacquer, and it's going down really smooth. It's actually made the process not, not... supposed to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going down smoother than whiskey. I don't that's know. what uh that's what Justin over at Rustic Grain designed Tampa sprays like. A yeah, pilot. it's fantastic. Yeah. It yeah. you know it 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 comes out fairly thick with the gun i'm using but it 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 smooths and levels out like really nicely and it's 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 got a very nice texture to it i'm super impressed with the product how many coats do you have to do i've been doing three okay i don't know if that's uh, i don't know if that's it it dry so it doesn't dry as fast as like in in a solvent based lacquer but it dries or cures in about 45 minutes to an hour it's not bad it's not too bad but I'm laying it. I'm laying it down pretty thick. That's half what I've been inch, working on. Nothing, cups. nothing, nothing uh, super exciting. Just me spraying all week. Mike, what have you been working on? Uh, I've got a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on right now. Um, my job. We have a very big project we're trying to land at my day job, and then I've got some other stuff going on at my job that I'll talk about more over the next few weeks i'm not going to talk about it right now but there's a lot of transitional stuff going on right now with my life and my job so um i've been really really honestly really tired this week and it's kind of just draining on me i've been i haven't been pushing it past the shop past 9 30 even really once this week i think maybe one or two nights but i've been kind of cutting it calling it early and getting into the house as soon as i could this week because i am uh (laughs) i've been very tired but i got um Shipped out a bunch of stuff this week, though, even though I was kind of dragging butt this week. Got the chart, uh, by the way. Finally came in. Oh, today. you did? Great. Yes. Great. I didn't get to do a story. It literally came in before we started. Oh, no worries. The, I've had, oh, the USPS is just oh, an absolute, the just, just killing me right now, like absolutely killing me. The price of those charts is based entirely on me being able to ship them via media mail because they're a chart and they're considered educational content, so I can ship them via media mail. Well, it's starting to get to the point where I might have to think about raising the prices and shipping them another way because USPS is just causing so many issues. It's 
it's really disappointing how bad that uh, organization is. They don't care about um, media mail. They don't want to get books to the children. They need to figure it out. It's getting embarrassing. That's our country's uh, mail delivery system. Anyway, um, but yeah, I've been working on uh, this week. I've been just wrapping up a bunch of orders. I've been working on a sign for a patron. I started that last weekend. I think I talked about that last week. Uh, kind of just kind of putzing along on that, to be honest. I got a, I had a bunch of different orders, so bunch of small things kind of pulling me in different directions i milled up all the ash for the the legs stretchers and joists for the coffee table tomorrow i will be going crazy on that uh project i'm going to be spending most of the day doing that my cousin's coming in the morning he's going to be helping me all day Uh, i've got a guy a, a friend of mine locally his name's sean he's pin makers on instagram he's going to be um coming over for some slab flattening and then a gal who i'm doing a project with she's starting an earring company i'm helping her laser out everything she she's doing everything out of cork and she's anyway she's got some pretty cool ideas and we're working together on that so i'm going to be lasering out some stuff for her and then i got to spray the spray cart i made that spray cart a couple weeks ago or a week ago i don't remember when it was but uh I've had a lot of people who are very interested in that thing. So I think I, I wasn't going to really make a video for it, but I think I am going to make a video for it now because I've got a lot of people asking and uh, it's not really accessible to a lot of people though, because it mostly was done on the CNC. So that was kind of my thought was to not do it. But I was like, do you really want me to make a video on this? And I've had people go like, yeah, I just kind of want to see how you did it, even though I can't make it. I was like, all right, seems like destined for failure, but I'm going to try and ma- get that video out for that because uh I guess it's cool. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, and I'm working on the video for the uh, Redwood bench. And I'm also probably going to be starting making another Redwood bench, but for us this time, instead of uh, nice. for someone else, I'm going to do that out of uh, mm-hmm. DIY construction grade cedar or Redwood from the big box store, uh, just so everyone can access it. And I was going to make a video out of that. I've got the plans and everything done for that. So I'm going to make it so everyone you can buy plans and make that bench with my plans and how I made it. So if I've had a lot of people ask for that. Who knows if anything will come of it, but I'm definitely going to make the video and offer the plans and see, see what happens with that. So um, let's see. I've got two tables. I've got a coffee table and a dining table for a couple. That's part of the table. I'm the coffee table I'm working on. Um, I've got another table for another couple. And then I actually got a dining table. Uh, today, which is actually I'm making for my dad and my stepmom. So that I'm going to be starting on. I'm going to go pick up the slabs for that. That's going to be uh, a, you guys see that English elm. I'm always talking about English yeah. elm. Uh, that the top is going to be English elm. Same with the bench. Uh, so they finally up? came to their senses. Yes. Thank God. So <laughs> it's going to be English elm. And I'm going to be uh, my buddy Aaron over at Bidwell. Uh, Wood is going to be making the base for that. So he's got three bases he's finishing up for me right now or two two bases well i guess it's one set of bases uh it's one for a table one for a bench so that's one set of bases uh and then he's making this other set of benches uh bases for me as well so uh yeah it's kind of busy right now it's, it's awesome i love it i literally love it i just need to figure out how to manage my time right now i'm exhausted <laughs> pete what about you well i'd just like to say that you look you looked less tired this week because the last couple of weeks you've been using the candle at all ends. <laughs> like it's been pretty. Candles, uh, how are those candles on? What the heck? <laughs> oh, wait, I thought you put that on on purpose. I did not mean to do that. Did not notice that. <laughs> so I don't screw it. No, I didn't notice. Oh, that. that's it's in the video now. Oh <laughs> uh, well, that's fine. Well, it was, it I mean, it was, it was Arbor Day. We were talking about Arbor Day. I get it. Right. It's a, it's, I mean, a, it's a light holiday. Yes. <laughs> it's a celebration. Um, Easter's got baskets. We, the Arbor Day's got lights and branches. Uh, anyway, so for me, I was house hunting with Emma last week and, or last weekend. And we went to see these two on paper gorgeous places. First one was um, it ended up being just a super old house where they added two additions and it, it had a murder basement. It was really nice where you didn't know we wanted one, but it was really cool to have one. Um, this uh, house was out, but the property and the shop was gorgeous. It, it was a two car, but it was like extra wide, super tall, extra deep. And it had a full loft, yeah. like full height. You could walk around in there. And I'm like, nice. this is literally you like passed on the shop. murder basement. I, you know, I have to say no. It was, you know why? 
because I had two oil tanks because there's two zones heating the house. So I can't do two oil tanks, sorry. Everything else was perfect. No, the other house was like, oh, this place is gorgeous. It's, it's in the middle of the woods. It's on three acres. It was on the side of a freaking cliff. And going up to it was a dirt and gravel road. And we were in a, a Subaru. And uh, it, was, it was still dangerous to like go up the thing. Hashtag our, ambassador. Yeah. Our realtor actually legit <laughs> barely made it up that hill. It was like, cause he's in like some Buick or something. Um, and then we went to see like a throwaway house. We we're just like, all right, let's just see another one. It's on a way home. Let's go see it. And we kind of fell in love a little bit. We we're like, okay, wait, this checks all the boxes. What's wrong with it? Why is it still in a market? What's up? Um, it had a pool, two and a half car garage, 13 foot ceilings, <laughs> like the panel right there in a the shop with room on uh, for expansion. But it turns out it's a modular built home. So like where the sections were assembled together was separating in some spots. And it was just poorly built. It was kind of like not the quality we wanted. Uh, we bummer. didn't notice that until the second visit. So we kind when of- your foot went through the floor? There. Yeah, when the foot went through the floor. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, it was that. But it, it wasn't too bad, whatever. It, it was shut down. We actually have no houses lined up for this week. There's nothing out there right now. We're just kind of super bummed. So uh, aside have from that- Have you thought about getting a houseboat? No, but we're actually, we're, we're thinking about maybe going to another state to just kind of explore our options. We might go late in April and kind of see what's out there in other states, you know, more desirable states, states that like a lot of young, cool, hip people live in, like Nebraska. So <laughs> we're going to see. Um, and aside from that, I did, uh, I started restoring two hand planes. I have a number seven Stanley and a number three Stanley Sweetheart that I want to restore. So I sharpened the blades and now I started lapping the plane bottoms and I realized they are just in terrible shape so is that a uh, euphemism a... no, no lapping the plane bottom. lapping the plane <laughs> maybe i don't know dang it maybe it's Sounds a dirty fun. thing <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be restoring those two planes over the next few days i'm getting some help from the community and um aside from that i knocked out a video this week um i love to copy mike so anytime mike gets something i need to get it uh he got a laser i got a laser he... That's the one time that's happened. Yep. And then he made a laser video. And then I was like, <laughs> I, you can thief. Do, I can do more Polish video. And then I posted. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be I'm going to engrave this Polish. kielbasa. So it was um, backwards, basically. Yeah. A fun, fun fact. Anytime there's like the audio is really low and there's just music playing. You can only hear like the drill going. I'm talking in Polish to my dad, who was like out of the camera shot. He just stayed out of the shot and just talked to me the whole time. None of the audio was usable. <laughs> so it was very Polish. Um, but yeah, so knocked out the video, got it up on YouTube. Uh, you should check it out because it's only my second full length video. Uh, and that's pretty much been my week. Oh, I also cleaned up like all my SEO stuff the last few days uh, between all my links, my shops, uh, you know, the way my YouTube looks, the way my uh, Amazon store looks all that fun stuff, all the behind the scenes stuff that we kind of keep putting off to the side. Dan? No, a, Mike. Mike? Some. Oh, you? I was going to say, when you're done, Pete, it's fine. No, I'm done. That's pretty much it. Oh, okay. That's been my week. I forgot to mention that I, I bought a, I'm redoing my website too. I kind of had like a, uh, a decision about Dan too. Um, how I want to like handle my, my online store. I'm going to keep my, my Etsy store because it's just, it's doing really well. Uh, I'm going to keep my, smaller like home decor sort of knickknacky things on there that sell because those are those are doing pretty good um but the items that i sell that are more directed towards the woodworking crowd like the imperial charts and the um uh like my my plans and my svgs and different ip stuff i'm gonna start selling that on my website when i get this up and running just because I doubt there's people on Etsy looking for that stuff. I don't think I'm getting those sales from an Etsy crowd. I think I'm getting them from people coming from my social media to my website. So I don't really need to give up the Etsy fee for that stuff, especially since I'm not, I'm probably not like adding anything to my Etsy, like my trays and those things like that. I'm getting random people that I've never heard of for sure. Some I'm getting support from the community on some of those things, but like um, most of that stuff is random people I've never heard of. <clears throat> and I want to keep it that way. I want to kind of keep that Etsy business almost separate, like its own little entity within my organization. So I'm, I'm moving my, my, I'm getting my website up and running. I'm getting some help from my friend. She's doing a really good job. She had to hop in there and help today. She was in there for like an hour and a half uh, figuring stuff out. So I can, I, I want to know how it works, but I don't really want to run it because I don't mm -hmm. really have time. So she's doing 
she's doing a lot of the back end stuff. So I'm just kind of getting in there in case there's ever like a, an emergency, I can jump in there and fix anything unless it's really dire. So getting that up and running right now, hopefully that'll get going. Uh, I'm hoping for middle of next week to make that live, but it, it might be a little longer because uh, it's going pretty slow. But anyway, that was just something else I was doing this week. Migrating my website. Just want to get off Wix real bad. I'm just tired of Wix. Yeah, I so. don't like Wix. Um, yeah, I'm a, I actually started doing work on my, my Squarespace too, and I, I can't wait to get that up. I, that's what the next thing I need to just, I need a landing page for all this stuff. So I'm yeah. excited for that. Um, uh, by the way, I'm, I, Mike, I never linked your video when you dropped it last week or two weeks ago. It was last week, right? Which video? Uh, your, your laser video. Oh, that's week. several weeks old. I oh, think. Maybe two weeks ago. Whatever. I'm. I'm gonna. I'll link mine and Mike's. Three just weeks so you guys ago. can you compare them and then it's tell fine. us who's his best. Um, I think. Cool. Who's his best? <laughs> yeah, well, what's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> what's up? Anyways. Uh. Yeah. You got some questions? Net. Net. No. Actually, oh. we didn't get any of this week. No, okay. I'm just kidding. Uh, this show, first Thanks question is. Yeah, it was a good one. It was a good one. Uh, this first question is from Brad Gillespie. We always call him Giles Pie. Giles Pie. Really, it's it's Gillespie. Hey guys, this is Brad from Ethan Creek Woodworks. Love the show. Big fan. So I'm moving to a new shop, and it's a big upgrade for me, almost double the size. And I'm wondering if you guys had to go back and redesign your whole shop, what would one thing you'd do or one thing you would change in your shop? What would it be? Um I'm pretty excited about the new place and I'm just curious if you had to go back and do it all over again, what would you change? Keep it up. Thanks guys. Pete, what would you change? Well, I'm literally about to go into a new shop. So I'm going to literally be answering this question to myself. Um, and I think the first thing really is electrical hundred percent. I like planning electrical out all over the shop. Uh, is very important because right now I basically I have to add it as I go and it's kind of a mishmash of like long runs for certain sections so like I can't run too many tools on one run because it'll blow a breaker um, so that's big the other thing is dust collection like accounting for where dust collection is going to be and where I'm going to set everything up um, so it's like it's like a layout thing more than anything and since I'm going into a new shop I'm going to be doing that and one other thing that I kind of want to I was kind of already planning in my head when we started looking at this house that we like is the floor uh because I currently I'm on like a cracked slab in the garage where like it kind of dips in the center it's like hasn't moved since we moved in it's just been always cracked and it's not super flat so when I'm like rolling tools around it like it goes it, I don't have a basically a flat floor because if I put it on two planes it just gets all screwed up so leveling out my floor maybe even pouring a new slab or maybe doing that like uh, a, the acrylic or whatever epoxy flooring where you like throw the flakes on so it's all pretty what's up luna so i'd love like uh i don't need it to be a muted. level Sorry floor about that. <laughs> but a flat floor i just want a flat floor i want it consistent through the whole shop um but electrical is definitely like top of the list so i can you know two 110s and a 220 at every receptacle all the way around right mike that's the best way to do electrical yeah. for sure so mike how, how would you do it how would you do your shop um, it's honestly, I feel pretty good about how my layout is. There's not a whole lot I would change. I mean, obviously I've changed it around like six times. So the way it is now, it's about as good as it can get to be quite honest. I mean, it's just, I just need more space at this point. There's not if a you're going into a like, new space. What would be like your first priority? Oh, more space. <laughs> I mean, that's the number one part. Well, once you let's go into a big, big space, like first thing that you want to focus on to get yourself blank space well i need the electrical i mean obviously uh the floor thing would be really nice to get the epoxy down but uh ultimately that's not like super high on my list i mean uh but that stuff is really durable like you get that floor that garage floor epoxy in yeah. and i mean it looks and it self levels and stuff that stuff is really nice but the problem is if your slab keeps cracking or going out it's going to go out too so it's kind of like eh, you know who knows but um but definitely electrical. I really like having, um, I like having the two, the one ten and the two twenty every every like six to eight feet. It's yeah. it's just really nice in the shop right now. So I'll definitely continue that. I think I want three phase in the next shop. Not if, I definitely want three phase in the next shop, um, because that's what I'm gonna really need for my CNC. 
And uh, I'd also like to get three phase because I think I want to get rid of my two dust collectors and get the one bigger, like the T5. Is that the one with the, the two bags? and a it's, The T5, hoppers? I think, has three bags, has three hoppers on it. Um, but I think I'd like to get a setup like that, either something like that or one of the, um, what's that? Uh, NIDA, the Oneida one where I can just have it blow the chips outside of my shop. Uh, where it just puts everything outside and you don't actually have to maintain a bag. That'd be like really a nice situation where it just puts it outside into like a bin outside. That'd be just mm. really nice. It'd be nice not to deal with that. Um, Cause you can also get it where the, 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 the evacuation duct, you can like move it to one, one pipe and it puts out dust, like the uh, sawdust. And cause sometimes I work with HDPE and different plastics and stuff. You can move the pipe over and it'll knock it over to another area when you have plastics and stuff. So that'd be really nice just to not have to deal with that. That's like a dream scenario, but really I am at the point now, especially when I upgrade my CNC where I'm going to really need, um, probably need to upgrade my C my dust collection, I think. Um, but in terms of like tools and stuff, just the CNC and I'd really like to upgrade the laser. I don't see myself upgrading a jointer because my jointer is big and really great. But I'm using my, hey Paco, what's up dude? I'm using my CNC as a jointer and planer more and more lately. Like it's just so, like when I'm dealing with wide, wide boards, if I got something that's like 10 inches or wider, I just take it to the CNC and flatten it. It's so much fat. It's not really faster. <laughs> yeah. It's not faster, but it, it, it's just something I can do and kind of do other things. I can set up a quick program and, and walk away. Uh, and it's like, it, it does really a really nice job, yeah. but um yeah, I mean, it definitely be electrical. Uh, I definitely want an office. Oh, I want a spray booth so bad. Oh, yes. Like, so bad. I want a spray booth and I want uh, an office and I want like really good climate control, uh, totally separated climate control that that's really going to be, especially with what the plans I have, I'm going to need something that can keep my place warm. So um, yeah, that's, I guess that'd be the dream scenario is more the answer, but in terms of like, what do I wish I would have done differently? Uh, I don't really have an answer to that specifically. Dan? After this week, I really wish I would have allocated more space to assembly. I feel like that that's kind of an overlooked thing that a lot of people don't don't uh, give enough attention. I've been I've been making this cabinet and it really takes up a lot of space and, and I do a lot of bigger projects. So I feel like more assembly space is definitely needed. And if I could do it over, like maybe that is something I'd focus on more. I feel like as my shop grows, it's not like growing, but I'm just adding more machinery, which is taken away from, from the assembly space that I had. So I wish I would, would have thought about that more. And like Mike said, I wish I had a dedicated spray area. So I think nice. that would be super handy, like especially with this week, having to uh, deal with dodging the rain and trying to spray around the rain. And it's been it's been quite a struggle. A lot of my machines have they're coated in in white lacquer, white paint right now. Like my Laguna bandsaw has white paint all no. over it because I you do what you got to do, like the base of it, not the cast iron. The cast iron's fine. Well, it come off cover anyway. the cast iron, but the, like the base of the the bandsaw has got a bunch of white paint on it right now, which is they're kind of tools. A bummer, but they're made to get used. Exactly. That's that's kind of how I see it. And my driveway, like I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned in the show or if I mentioned in the pre-show. Yeah, the, it's like the the marriage is over. <laughs> <laughs> it's covered in white paint. I, I'm I'm fairly positive like, I can get that move, off you with spray it black. <laughs> I'm fairly positive I can get that off with a power power washer that I have, but for sure, we'll see. Doesn't it sound just so nice? A spray booth, like, just yes. sounds like dude, such 100%. a dream, like, dude, just like, or at uh. least a big enough area where you can like drop like a thing. Like, I really want to put like we made jokes about this a week or two ago about getting that extra Harbor Freight carport. I and I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not joking about that. Really I want to do it, but. My my front yard and my side yard is so small. I think I I I'd, I'd become that house in the neighborhood. Yeah, that, like, that would, and like, it's like your front out. yard. That's different. Yeah. It's your front yard. It'd be a yeah. if I could if I had space in the backyard, no problem. But in my front yard or my side yard, where doesn't, it's visible from the street, uh, doesn't if you the the top the area that we don't talk about in your shop, the wall behind that isn't that like 
in like a spot, like a little cutaway area where you could put a spray thing. That'd be a nightmare setting up over there, though. That would be a nightmare, and that's where I'm going to put my CNC. That's where CNC's going. No, no, not inside. I mean, behind the wall outside. Is there like a flat area out there? Is that I don't even. No. I've never, we never even no. went to your backyard. We didn't no. even go to ethnic sandwiches. It was a bogus trip. What's <laughs> I gotta put that on my uh, have to see list. Oh yeah, for sure. Anyway, yeah, the, I'm, uh, I'm really like cramped on space. I feel see Jeff and Jess from Two Moose. They have that like spray room. I'm pretty jealous. And I'm so, very so of that. Justin from Rustic Grain, they have a spray room, right? They have a spray room. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he needs it. He's just doing cabinets all day. Yeah. They're so efficient, dude. Like I see him. They're super efficient. I've been watching crazy. their posts and their stories, and, and I'm crazy jealous. Dan, you I'm, I'm just making out, a man. tiny. I'm just making a tiny cabinet, like compared yeah. to what Justin. You mentioned like assembly and, uh, space. Fallon and I'm are like, doing over there. you know what? You're right. Like I would love a second bench just to assemble stuff because right now I just yeah. have my outfeed. I had kind of like a mental breakdown last weekend. I'm just so. T- I I really have. I have so many projects now. Like I've got three big projects and then i've got kind of at any time right now i've got anywhere between five and like 15 small projects for etsy going and i've got the one outfeed table and it's five by five and it's just not enough like i'm having to literally i have nowhere to stage multiple projects and i've got everything on this five by five table that i can work on and then as soon as i'm done with the parts that i'm working on those i have to clear every i have to clean my whole area there and then bring the other things it's such a headache I was, I think I was telling you guys, I need like two four by eight torsion box workbenches outside of that one. I need like full assembly benches where I can mm-hmm. have a big project on another big project on. And then all my little small projects going on that one bit, another bench. I, I just, I need this. I need to get this figured out. It's like, getting I know very it's not frustrating. a ton of new surface, but like, dude, get those magnet magnetic sheets for your, uh, your joiner. That's like a, a, na- a long, narrow workbench. I literally like I'll put cutting boards as they're gluing like i'll put a piece of wood underneath it and i just put them on there and if any glue it's gets just, on that white stuff it just pops right off like i literally treat it like a workbench now when yeah. i'm not using it i've yeah. had I don't, I don't think i'm gonna do that but i've had a buddy come I mean, over and he's he's like offered to help me because i i feel like i'm so far behind he's offered to help me but there's a huge bottleneck with the work surfaces that we could work on like it, it really almost does no good to have two people in the shop because there's it's no worse. workspace. It's yeah, worse. It's kind of worse. Like it, it sounds good in theory, but it doesn't work out. Last weekend, I was going to have my cousin come over, but I didn't because it was that. I was just, I'm just going to be, I was moving beams and big pieces of wood around. I would have just knocking into them. I've got it all broken down into rough, rough sizes now. So tomorrow, me and him can just pass each other's stuff um while we're milling you know we're going to be running stuff through the planer and he knows how to run my cnc so he's going to be yeah we're, we're gonna he's gonna pass one and then i'm gonna pass one and then we'll just pass it. no uh but he knows how to run the cnc at least enough to get like some slab flattening and other things going and he knows how to run the laser so he'll get he'll be doing those things while i'm spraying and working on other stuff so i just it's just it sucks tiny tiny shop problems really suck it's just really frustrating and it it just bottlenecks productivity like to the max. And it's just, Absolutely. I cannot stand inefficiencies. I cannot stand it. It drives me nuts. And I like just lost it last weekend because it's so You would have not enjoyed your time at my shop this week. <laughs> like, there was nothing for me to do. Spray, it's, wait, spray, it's just, wait. It's just so frustrating. Anyway, uh, was that the first question? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that question. And that's uh, the show. This next, all right, this next one's from Braden Baima. Hey guys, uh, it's Graydon over here at Chiseled Woodworking, um, and I have a really important um, question that I think we all uh, need to hear from you guys, um, and I know you guys don't like to get political on that, but I think this is one of those really important ones that I, I think we can all be united on, um, and that, so what's up with Velveeta prices? I mean, seven ninety nine a box, for real? Like, I love me some chili cheese dip, and I'm sure you guys do too. Um, and I used to be able to take that to a tailgate party for like five bucks, and now it's up to like 10, 12 bucks to be able to put that all together. Oh my goodness. So I'm just curious, what is your guys' solution to this extremely important economic crisis that's going on right now in regards to Velveeta? Um, and just. I mean, I just think it's ridiculous. And I just hope that you guys can give us some hope in this really um, trying time um, when it comes to this really important issue um, and all of woodworking. So 
All right. Thank you, guys. Hope you guys have a great week. Before the show, we all talked, and uh, Pete speaks for us all equally on this topic, and we won't need to pass it to anyone else. So straight to Pete. Okay, so here's what happened. So there was a, I was a, a two major chiefs. I changed my mind. Farms, Dan, no. <laughs> and they, they both burned down in the forest. So the prices of cheese went up. Not only that, but everyone that lost their jobs or just decided to go full time with maybe cheese making or cheese. COVID. I think because of COVID, obviously. COVID uh, cheese. A lot prices. of hot dog chili cheese carts went mm, live. And that sounds so good right now. Everyone started buying up Velveeta. You cut it. Hot dog get chili it for cheese cart. That sure does sound like a show title. It, it's through the roof, man. So uh, just everyone is just getting into cheese-based cuisine. And that, ugh, man, that that forest that took out those two large cheese-producing places. Um, and that's one just predominantly made flat sheets of cheese. And it's still like, going. Singles. And uh, that, that, yeah, that's why it's singles. Cheese goods? So as well. Cheese, cheese goods, goods are way up. Cheese goods are way big up. Big cheese is screwing big, up the economy. Big cheese <laughs> is trying to rob the little man. All right. Um, this anyways, next question. No, 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 no. I'm oh. going to talk a little bit about this. Okie dokie. Like, first wait, of you, all. You know something about cheese? First of all, Velveeta is a cheese product. Cheese Much like substitute. MDF is a wood product. That's a Either really way, you good analogy. Both. Old cheese. <laughs> you inhale both. Dan worked at a cheese factory from 94 to 97. They All they cut you was Velveeta. You can't compare Velveeta to Brie, much like you compare MDF to Walnut. All right? You can't speak for all of big cheese when you're talking big about cheese. Velveeta. Big cheese. Calm down. I don't know. I just want to throw that in. Are we, uh, have we successfully uh, fixed yeah. the cheese crisis? I think oh, so. Fixed? No. Cheese, cheese no. product crisis. Okay. The next, the next <laughs> question is from Jake Miller. He has this to say. Hey guys, this is Jake Miller with ASI Shop Life and a sweet idea on Instagram. Just calling in with a question about uh, customer timelines. So the last mm. couple months we've been given our, a lot of our customers like a three to four week window as far as when their projects are going to be completed. Um, unless they have a hard deadline that they need us to meet. Um, a lot of that is to for us to be able to batch like items together, whether it's barn doors or dog crates or whatever. Um, but we've been having a lot of issues with customers blowing us up and freaking out when, you know, we hit the beginning of that window wanting to know exactly when their project is going to be completed. So just wanted to see how you guys deal with your customers um, as well as your kind of your work life balance on that side of things. Um, you know, we run into a lot of issues, especially this time of year with rain and humidity, um, causing problems as far as paint and that sort of thing, and spraying any finish for that matter. And, um, you know, our customers seem to, you know, to a certain degree, not really care, uh, that it's been raining and we can't paint. So yeah, just wanted to see how you guys deal with it. And, uh, yeah, love the show. Thanks guys. Dan. First of all, Jake over at ASI Shop Life is a baller. If you're not if you're not following him, that, that dude hustling. cranks out that that dude is a hustler and he cranks out large scale projects on a weekly basis. It is insane. And he has that other IG, a sweet idea where they post their finished stuff. Uh, a sweet idea is a sweet S U I T, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yep. um I try to manage my clients' expectations from the get-go, and I let them know exactly what they're getting into. I feel like a lot of people reach out and and order stuff for me because they've seen me on Instagram and they know about my reputation, which is a weird flex for me. But um, I always let them know, you know, I'm just a one-guy shop. I have a tiny shop. It's going to take a while. I can only do one project at a time. Because I'm I'm working on large scale projects. I can't work on a cabinet and a set of doors and a pergola all at the same time. I wish I could, but I can't. So I try to manage those expectations from the get go. And I give them a rough timeline. Like I'm telling all my clients currently, you know, it's going to be six to eight weeks before I can even start on your project. And hopefully, you know, they're cool with that. If they're not, you know, I have to pass. So that's how I manage that, I guess. P 
Pete? Uh, I, I'm very straightforward with people in my timelines. If they, you know, if they don't like it, I mean, I've, I've had people be like, Oh no, we can't do that. Cause like, we can't wait that long. Like, that's fine. And I don't even take on major jobs. I just like, I have a lot going on in my life and I'm doing this part-time and Hey, I'm doing this part-time. This is my timeline. If you don't like it, sorry. And there has even been projects where I just straight up told someone like, you know what, honestly, I can't start this right now. And I don't know when I can because it's a big project and here's someone local that can do it for you probably sooner. So here's the thing. If they don't understand and Dan, actually you, you didn't mention that one time where you had like someone like breathing down your neck a little bit. Um, local. You job. mean like currently? Well, I don't know if there's that too, but um, it, you know, sometimes you just gotta be very straightforward with the customer. Like, listen, it's happening uh, because, and this goes back to a conversation we had kind of earlier on, which is, Oh, well, earlier on, like a couple episodes ago, which was the whole thing of like, you should be taking a, at least at the very least a material deposit. So if that customer like is up your butt, you can basically be like, like I, I won't complete your job then. Like I can't do it. If you need it done by this or whatever, like whatever, if the job falls apart or whatever, you're covered for your materials and your time that you've put in thus far, hopefully. Um, so, you know, it's just to cover yourself as best as you can, but try to, I mean, you're, Dude, you're hustling it. Jake's, like you said, he's hustling. And he's got a spray room, guys. He's got a spray room. He does. He's serious. Super um, jelly. Yeah, you just got to be very straight with these people. I mean, they just got to know, you know, and if it costs you future business, it's a bummer. But do you really want to be working with that client again on a large job? I think most people prefer honesty. Yeah. Instead of bull crap excuses. Yeah. And honestly, overshoot and, and our... Undershoot, um, over deliver. Undershoot, over deliver. Yeah. Tell them, hey, you know what? It's going to be two months. And then like a mo month and a half in, you're almost done with the project. Like surprise and delight. That's always been my thing. So like tell them a little more and then just knock it out a little faster. I think that's a good way to do it. Mike, how do you do it? Um, well, I do everything I can to keep them happy and be honest though. I mean, I tell them, you know, here, this is what's going on. This is where we're at. This is what we're ran into. I like to keep them a I like to keep them in the loop kind of the whole time while I'm going as much as I can, especially since it's all kind of publicly displayed on Instagram. Anyway, I don't want to be yeah. like, Oh, Hey, uh, you know, a dog, my, my shop was blown up jihadis. No, I don't, I don't want to like lie because they can just check online and see where I'm at. So, um, I just try to tell them the truth, you know, Hey, this happened. This is going this direction. And they've never, I've never had anyone be like, this is, this is garbage. So you just kind of be realistic. I mean, you have to be able to, it's not your customer's problem if you take on too much work, but you do need to tell them how much work you're doing. So they have it. You need to create expectations. That's exactly what these guys already said. So just got to create the expectation. I mean, it's not their problem, uh, but generally people are understanding, especially when you're making um, custom pieces. I think kind of people go into it for the most part, if they don't go into it, understanding what they are buying, then it's your job to explain to them that they are buying a handcrafted piece of furniture and that it can and probably will take more time than originally thought. So you need to just kind of put that on the table and be like, look, I'm not going to be as cheap as target. I'm not going to be as cheap as West Elm. Um, it's going to be, you're going to be the only person in the whole world that has this piece of furniture. And that's what makes this special, not how mm -hmm. quickly I get it done. So you need to, that's what needs to be communicated to them. So they're not getting good way to put it. They're getting something inspired by something they saw online. And that's kind of how we all price it when it's a big thing. We go, what's your inspiration? And then we get our inspiration. You see their inspiration, then we build a design or whatever, but they're not getting that exact piece. They're getting a piece that you handcrafted. So you're explaining to them. If you're running a shop where you're trying to copy and that's not, this isn't uh, talking down. Anymore. If someone's running the shop, like a crazy production shop where they're trying to literally just knock out stuff as cheap as they can, that's a different kind of shop. That's just not what we're doing in our shops, I think. Um, I actually don't know of any shops that are doing stuff like that. I guess the closest thing would be like high production cabinet shops where they're literally knocking out big production cabinets, but that's just totally different industry. So just make sure you communicate to them what they're what they're getting into don't assume they know what they're getting into 
don't assume that someone's going to like live edge on something or assume someone's going to like certain things like move with those like you got to communicate with them like hey what do you what you know what do you think about this kind of because people have different feelings about different things and as long as those conversations are had you're probably going to have the customer leaving with a really good customer or a really good buying experience so that's kind of your your job is to make sure the experience is good for them dan Another thing that I like to sell uh, my product is the story of the product. So I'll tell them, you know, here's my social medias, follow along with, with my projects here, and you can see what I'm doing and what I'm up to. And you can see that I'm working every day. Watch and me take can, naps you live. Can, you can <laughs> watch the timeline of your piece come into life. And I think that that kind of does two things, you know, it gives, it gives people the story of their piece and it also lets them know how things are going. And so they're not bothering you all the time. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Good. All right. This next question is from Kamani Strayhorn. Hey guys, this is Kamani from Bam Stray Designs. And my question this week is about giveaways. Um, now, I've seen some pretty decent growth the last couple of months, and so I think I'll be hitting my 1K pretty soon. So I kind of want to do something to give back to the community. So I know that uh, you guys just had a conversation about giveaways, we'll just say back in episode 13. Um, and so I just kind of want to expound upon a couple of things you guys talked about. Uh, first, I kind of want to do the uh, giveaway in two parts. Uh, part one is a you know general gift, whatever kind of sponsor I can kind of team up with in general, like something something nice any maker could use. But kind of like Dan mentioned in his, I don't want just some rando uh, to you know who likes giveaways to tag on and you know get get a you know get a nice thing. I'd rather it go to somebody who, you know, would actually support it or use it or who's in the community. So I might not even use the hashtag giveaway. I'm thinking I may go all Rick James and call it celebration uh, just to kind of, you know, get that hashtag away from it and maybe detract some people from trying to, you know, add, you know, jump on my account, try to win a thing and then disappear. Um, the other part is uh, I want to make sure I make something in the second prize pack to actually go to makers who have supported me up to that 1k point. Um, so my question would be like, you know, what, what do you think or what do you consider are some good prizes to, you know, other makers like really like, or really appreciate. Um, there's a couple of things I think I make fairly, you know, unique to what I do. Um, like some of the LED logo signs, uh, Dan mentioned doing mallets in his giveaway, um, which is something I want to do this year. So just kind of seeing how like, you know, breaking up the giveaways and giving back to the maker community and, you know, doing another giveaway that if some rando just happens to win it, like it doesn't cause too much heartburn. So thanks. Bye. Dan. I remember back for my 1K giveaway, I didn't know if I was going to do anything. And I ended up deciding like at the last moment that I was going to do something. I didn't reach out to brands. I just, I went to Menards and you can go to any box store. It doesn't matter. I went to Menards and I bought like a 16 ounce bottle of glue, some little tools. And I made a post and said, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's following along. Here's what you got to do. There's no certain hashtags. I just wanted like people to comment on my post uh, and tell me something about themselves. And I picked a random number or a random commenter from there. And I think that worked out well. If your goal is to give back to the people that are following you, I think you need to do something like that instead of worrying about growing your account. If your goal is to grow your account, you know, you need to worry about your general audience and how to keep those people there. And I don't have an answer for that, unfortunately. I think a mallet is a, is a good thing. Like, especially if uh, you're trying to give, a, give away something to the maker community, like every one of us can use a mallet or, you know, we appreciate the, the effort it takes to make the mallet. But I, I, I like the idea of just going to and buying a, a quick little sample of things like glue and little tool or whatever, and giving that back to your, to your followers. What do you think, Pete? Or even make something there, yeah, make something yourself. I, I like it. And honestly, I'm, I'm kind of, I have two opinions of the giveaway. I, I both have a bad opinion of it and a good opinion. Like people like to win stuff. And it's also really nice to get 
something back to the community. Like Dan said, you don't, you know, you can take some money out from your pocket and do it, but there are brands that are willing to do that as well. There's a lot, a lot of these brands are more willing to sponsor a giveaway than to actually work with you if you're a smaller account too, which is kind of silly, oh, but you know. A lot of times when you work with a brand, they have like some crazy expectations. Some, yes. And they have some, some things that they, they request that you do. But also giveaway is a great way to just get your foot in a door with a brand. So that's another True. thing. Um, that's like a lot of my first relationships started. I, I, I think, listen, you can't go wrong with any consumables, any of the, the, the usuals that you see on almost every giveaway you see them for a reason. They're consumables. People are going to be happy to get a, a variety of glues or, you know, whatever, uh, butcher block or uh, oil or whatever it might be, you know, maybe some clamps or that's, it's useful stuff. So anything you can get from a sponsor, I think is great. Uh, sponsors are going to be usually, you know, the, the ones that you see a lot are usually great ones to work with. Head up like, um, what's the glo- uh, firm grip gloves. They're great. I've worked with them a bunch. Um, and then if you do want to do a secondary one with the makers, just make sure the makers are very committed to it as well. It's not like, a, oh, fine, I'll do it. Because I've heard some stories of people just simply, they're running their businesses or they're doing it as a part-time hobby. And to work in a free order into their regular repertoire is a little hard sometimes. So there's been, you know, but this, again, this has happened with brands too, where it takes a while for them to get it out. Just, you know, but it does look bad on you if that's what you're having to deal with. Because they'll hit you up before they hit up the person that they're supposed to get the item from. It's just how it is. Um, so I say just, you know, reach out to some people that you know are definitely going to give you some stuff. Uh, if you're doing a thousand um, follower giveaway, hit me up. I'll throw something in from my store. Um, and hit up some brands, man. Like, get some free stuff for these people. It's a giveaway. It's nice. And I would uh, also, I would avoid, I've been hearing that apparently hashtag giveaway gets flagged on Instagram somehow. Just avoid that completely. And honestly, I would recommend go with Gleam Make those people put in some work. If they want free stuff, make them do some work. That's just my thought. Mike, what do you think? Um, if you're going to do like a general giveaway, do it how everyone does a general giveaway. Just kind of put put it out there and get as many eyes on it as you can. It sounded like Kamani was going to do two giveaways, like a general like random like stuff two, from a sponsor. One, and then two. Yeah. yeah, and then like, so for that second one, we're for, where it's for the makers, Dan and I think Pete set up a mallet. Um, mallets are great because you really can use one in the shop and they're just kind of cool. And they're whatever fun to it make. is, you, yeah, they're super fun to make. But whatever it is you end up making to give away or whatever you end up giving, giving away, um, here's the bottom line if you pick a name for that second group of people that make or give away and it's someone you don't recognize or don't want to give it to, just don't give it to them. Pick another name. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you don't have, you're not like the police aren't going to come knock down your door and be like, whoa, you fraudulently picked a name for a giveaway on Instagram. It's fine. If some random account that you've just recently saw, you know, interacting with your page since your giveaway started and the intent of that part of your giveaway was to give it to people who have been following you for X amount of time, just wait till you pick one of those names. Just keep yep. rewinding the dice until you pick a name. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not, you're not doing anything wrong. You're doing, you're adhering to the, spirit of your giveaway for that that's a good way to put it mike that's a great way to put it like the spirit of it because yeah there's so we've all done it you know honest i'll be honest though my last giveaway somebody won that was like their entire page was reposts of giveaways they didn't win yep sorry yeah actually back um, back in the day i wish i would have thought of that like i think i did a giveaway for four thousand random number but like uh i think somebody won and i went to their page and it was all like reposts of giveaways. And I was like, oh, I'm so upset that this person won. It's your giveaway. Yeah, I couldn't owe anyone any told. explanations. Just, just give it to someone else. You don't, no one's going to come audit your giveaway. <laughs> it just, there's no like government agency that's going to roll into your house. Like, hey, Mr. Strayhorn, we heard you fraudulently p- p- picked a winner for your 1,000. Fo- no one cares. Now pick you who you me. want for your giveaway. Yeah, yeah, pick who you want for your giveaway. And if you have like a main giveaway where it's just like, like free game or whatever, do that however i do recommend gleam i don't know that it necessarily is important at a thousand followers you're probably not trying to like gather a bunch of emails for uh subscribers to your website and stuff but it does make it super easy however kamani there is a website you can use if you don't use gleam to pick a comment 
and I can walk you through that. Just reach out to me uh, if you want to do that for your giveaway. So however you do your giveaway is up to you. There's no right. There's literally no right. There's no wrong. It's your giveaway. Do it however you want. If you want to do the random thing for the giveaway part A and then the, the maker thing for giveaway part B, pick who you want it to win. I mean, I would probably not, you know, uh, intentionally well, have someone figured out someone. previously. Yeah, like don't handpick someone. You don't want to show favoritism, but, you know, have the random number generator. But it gives you, you know, if it comes up with someone terrible <laughs> that you don't like or think isn't worthy of it. Like a Dunlap. Giveaway. Say no, yeah. Or a Kapar. Right, or coffee. Or coffee any of this guys. actually... So like, I'm getting close to 50k followers. It's not a flex, but Word it's kind flex. of a flex. But I'm gonna do. I've already been thinking about it. I'm gonna do like a uh, throwback to my 1k giveaway, where I actually go out and buy something, and I'm gonna give it away to the my current one of my current followers. You're gonna buy a Laguna CNC to give away to people? I did not that's say crazy. that. Crazy, dude. That's awesome. A Laguna pin. I oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Strap. I'm gonna go buy some. I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be like a Menards based product, like of course. Some t-shirts, still waiting some on my shirts, some Master Force stuff. You know, something like that. I think that's what I'm gonna do, just to like give back to the people that are following me and support me. That's and like I'm an gonna. Attack, it's, though. it's gonna be like, <laughs> it's gonna be for somebody who actually engages on my page, instead of like some rando. There you go. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I do you. <laughs> no, I actually do want to do I want to do one coming up soon. I'm gonna do on my YouTube on my YouTube channel. I've actually got a that's what I did with my I did a mallet video. I I wanted to make a mallet for a YouTube video and I gave it away. And actually Ray Rossiter won that. But the uh cool. that was one I did like the last year sometime. But I have another idea for another giveaway where I want to make not a mallet. It's actually something I think not just makers would like, something nice I have an idea for. So I'm going to do a giveaway for that on my, my YouTube channel. But um, yeah, Dan's way of doing it is right. Do it however you want to do it. It's yours. For my don't 25K, anyone... I'm giving away a crisp $25 bill. That's it. And then, <laughs> and then don't let anyone, you know, tell you you have to do a giveaway either. So for 100K, you I'm you want. giving away access to my account. I'm going to give you the password. You can do whatever you want. Wow. Wow. Dan's getting hit one, huh? Openly? Okay. <laughs> All right, this next question is from wait, Nick wait, wait, no. Oh, giveaway time. <laughs> giveaway time. Do it. Take over, Dan. Oh, yeah, let's do, Transition. The, let's gotta, do the actual giveaway. I got to yeah. go on TikTok. I'll see you later. <laughs> so last week we gave away, thanks to Macbeth Hardwood, some micro jig push blocks. And that winner was, I don't think he was in the pre-show, but that winner was Shane Warren. But speaking of the pre-show, if you were in there with us, we gave away a t-shirt to the rustytool.com, which is this week's sponsor. Thank you to the Rusty Tool. And you can get an extra entry to our weekly giveaway that's sponsored by Macbeth Hardwood. And this week we are giving away a Freud dado stack that's specially made for saw stops, but you can use that in any 10 inch table saw that is contractor and above. I don't know if that'll work in a job site saw. Standard 10 inch. The tack life 10 inch uh, handheld table work. saw will work. Handheld <laughs> table saw won't work, yeah. Well, let's confuse everybody. Anyways, uh, this oh, yeah, week, thanks to Macbeth thing. Hardwood, we're gonna, we're gonna give away a Freud Dado stack. That is the SD-208S. And I have two, two options for the uh, code phrase this week. Uh, number one is the Arbor Stravaganza. That's real though. Can't use that one. Okay. Is that okay. real? Okay. Yeah, we're doing the Arbor Stravaganza 2021. Yeah, okay. It's a giveaway. Thing. We're getting Option shirts. Number now. two, lapping the plane. <laughs> it's too clean. Man, pretty. I mean, after you lap it, yeah. <laughs> lapping the plane, it is. Okay, lapping the All plane. Right. <laughs> <laughs> lapping the or, plane is your code phrase. Or, or you add some that. That kid is gonna get in a casket. Wait, what did John Grubb say? No, snap <laughs> into a casket. Snap into a casket. <laughs> no, no. We are not no, that's, doing a, that. that's that's an old episode. That, we got it. We that that kid uh, is gonna couple, snap into a casket. Okay, that's a couple episodes ago. That Pillow biter. Randy Savage joke. Pillow biter. <laughs> Damn. Rest in peace. What? Pillow biter. No, 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 no. We're not doing that either. 
We're going with uh, lapping the plane. That is your code phrase this week, ladies and gentlemen. Send that to us in an email at anotherwoodshoppodcast at gmail.com. You will get entered into the Macbeth Hardwood weekly giveaway. This week, we're giving away a Freud dado stack, standard 10-inch dado stack. Or, or no, standard 8-inch dado stack that goes into... It's an 8-inch. Eight eight yeah, yeah. stacks are 8-inch. Words, math, eight and numbers. Inches. Yep. Uh, back to the All show. All right. Uh, this next did you announce the winner, or did I miss it? I mean, yeah, Shane Warren. Oh, yeah. Yes, Shane okay, Warren. That's right. Yeah, yeah. SW Creations. Uh, this next one is from Nick Paccia. As I've said four times at the wrong time. Here we go. Hey yeah, guys, Nick from the Working <laughs> Green. Um, so coming up here soon, I'm going to be changing the prices on some of my products, and I have a returning customer who has purchased a bunch of those products in the past uh, for gifts for others. Um, so I'm just wondering what you guys would do if you were in this situation where, um, there was a price change and you had to inform that customer of the price change, um, knowing that they've been a pretty good returning customer in the past. Thanks guys. Dan, I like to reward returning and loyal customers. So I will say I've, I've grown, I've gotten busier. And my prices on this product are going to go up. But since you've been so great, I'm going to keep it the same for you. And that will do like a few things. Number one, it'll let them know that I'm, I'm more in demand. Number two, it'll make them feel all warm and fuzzy inside because I'm treating them like rock stars, which will in turn make them want to come back for even more. So that's what I would do. Question. What Bring if the it. reason you're increasing this is because of material costs? And now they start buying a ton of them because you've excited them so much. And now you're just losing money on this thing. Well, if they, if they buy, if they buy so much and I'm starting to lose money, my prices weren't high enough to begin with. But, but the increase but in material. Still losing money. But my prices weren't high enough to begin with. So you're a failure. Done, done logic. <laughs> Next. Pete. Is that, Sure, okay, why not? <laughs> why not? Let me follow that. This is my first show, time. That done show. Uh, I would, so I've done this before and basically I, I straight up told him, again, this goes back to the whole honesty thing. Hey, just so you know, I actually charge more for these, but you've bought one before or a couple before, whatever. Um, for this one, let's just keep it at the same price. Uh, first one's free. But, but the next one, like, just so you know, I'll probably like material cost, whatever it is um my time doesn't matter you don't need to give them an excuse for that but just say next one this is the probably the cost that we're going to be looking at um or you know for certain things in this case was like it was a cutting board i straight up just was like i'll have the the whatever the live prices are posted on my etsy i'll kind of have to go off of that at that point so yeah just like set the expectation like yeah reward them i, I do appreciate the whole rewarding the customer that's coming back um and you know if it's like a one-off whatever yeah but if also if somebody's hitting me with like Hey, I need 30 of these mini engraved cutting boards. I'll be like, cool. So let's talk the numbers. You're a returning customer. So maybe I'll take off 5% off of everything. And Dan, tossing it back to you. Okay. I just want to clarify. Like I never said, keep the price the same forever and ever. Like you're That's giving... what I heard. Mike, right? Same thing. I 100% heard Dan say he's going to keep the price for those people. Because I don't care what Kayla customer. says. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> Kayla! <laughs> she's, she's gonna coming come down. right down I know, she thinks dan's totally having the down. big one <laughs> <laughs> we need a text yeah it anyway. was a joke i was making hilarious awp jokes stay up there baby love you <laughs> just text her so she knows you're okay <laughs> nope gonna perpetuate the joke go on what were we gonna say oh no the, that's it oh I that just, was it okay yeah i was gonna say i have never been in that situation but depending on the relationship and how it was like, if obviously if this person's buying a lot, it doesn't necessarily mean you have like a really great, like interactive relationship with this person. It could be a pretty distant relationship. Like I'm starting to get into fabrication for people, for things. And I could see that situation where it came up where I could just send them an email and say, Hey, FYI, material costs have gone up. I can honor this price through one more shipment. But after that prices are going to be increasing X amount. Now, if it was a realtor customer who I'm making like cutting boards for or some sort of home decor item, uh, I would hop on the phone with them and I would say, hey, FYI, 
material prices have gone up or whatever the reason is. I mean, I can only really think of material pricing unless you're like starting to increase your price to slow down business a little bit. Um, but <clears throat> that would be a conversation. And I would say, Hey, look, I can honor this for the next few orders. Um, but I'm going to have to, this is where the prices has to go. Um, and then, you know, I would explain to them, Hey, you know, you're a really valuable customer to me. Uh, I hate doing this, but I do have to do this to maintain my business's uh, integrity. So uh, that's how I would handle it. Um, I think you would have to look at the percentage of what that customer is adding to your business. Like, are they buying one third of the products you're selling? Or are they buying like 0.03 of the percentage of the products you're selling? It's good you know, like, too. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you're yeah. selling if only you have a three items buying... a year and they're buying one of them, you don't want to make that person angry, right? You want to keep them on. I think at the end right. of the day, if we're all saying the same thing. Hey, treat the customer. I'm, you're assuming, with, I'm assuming the, like, that yeah. one item Give is them like loyalty pricing for now, but re like reframe the pricing for the future. Right. Yeah. I think though if you're talking about high ticket items right if you sell three items a year you're talking like each one's sixty thousand dollars whatever three of your customers i think if you're in a high ticket item like that though (laughs) you can absorb a lot into that price on some high ticket items there's a lot of variables in this so i mean there's a lot of things you gotta like that's my point there's a lot of variables to a thousand dollar items let's say i think that's you know easier an easier conversation like hey it's going to cost more the next time. Whether it's Some five things bucks also or like bucks. as you get into them, like you're actually running that. I talked to you guys about the thing I'm working on for that mm-hmm. company. Yep. That is, I am making that item as cheap as I can while still turning a profit, right? So I am having to buy, to maintain that price, I have to buy 500 board feet of walnut at once to maintain my price, to get it from, I'm buying that from Macbeth to get my price to, to run it at that price. Right. So if I did not buy it, the cost of my material would go up from, would go up. Uh, I don't know what that percentage would be uh, close to 60%, I guess is what it would be. Mm-hmm. A 60% material increase would absolutely result in me having a conversation with that guy going, Hey, this is going to get a little bit more expensive because of this. Now, I'm dealing with a business in that situation. So business folks usually respond a little bit more understandably as long as you can back it up with a letter. Whereas individual people kind of go, Hey, what the heck? But hopefully your relationship is good enough with them where you can kind of explain yourself and you're not just trying to screw them over. So you shouldn't have to absorb a price increase. That's an industry wide price increase just because a customer's not just because, because a customer is a good customer. You should do everything you can to mitigate those costs and keep them away from your customer. That's your job. But like sometimes at the end of the day, prices go up. Like in my day job, we deal with a lot of steel. Since November, the price of steel metal studs has gone up 65%. And the customer that we are, I've been so busy this week. We're working on a job right now. We're trying to get, we can't absorb that. We'd go bankrupt. (laughs) Like the material price is, is it, we literally have 150 people, without a job so there's a lot of aspects there's different things like if you're a small business obviously those numbers don't make any sense if you're like a one-man show like me or dan is or pete you know any of us who are one-man shows you're not talking about astronomical dollar amounts like that so there's just a million different factors and I also I as also long as you can like- absorb as if you can feel comfortable with absorbing that then then that's the right answer i also look at my For clients sure. as as me having a kind of a personal relationship with them and they're not just a number or a name and an email. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of coming at it from that angle as well. The uh, next question is from, oh, what's his name? Is it Andrew Smith? Andrew Smith. Andrew Smith, 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 builds. Smith builds. What's up guys. This is Andrew from Smith builds on Instagram. Uh, as a hobbyist, who's got sort of a busy and demanding job, job and a, busy and demanding family uh, who may want to get into the Etsy space at some point and make some sales. 
online and maybe even through Facebook Marketplace, just to sort of pad the budget for new tools. Wondering exactly how important having a YouTube channel is if I'm not looking to be an influencer just to build stuff in the garage for in the limited amount of free time I have and maybe make uh, a buck on it as a side hustle. Appreciate your thoughts. Thanks. Yeah. If you're not looking to be an influencer, you know, I say just do what makes you happy. You know, if you're looking to be an influencer, you know, you want to have your your toes in, in as many water pockets as possible. I don't know if hot that's hot pockets. A, yeah, hot pockets. Hot you want to you want to have your hands in as many pockets. What's the what's the saying? Cookie you wanna jar. Have your, <laughs> you want to you want to diversify. <laughs> you want to spread yourself out. Uh, but yeah, if you're not, if you're not, if your goal isn't to be an influencer, you know, you don't have to do anything. Just do what makes you happy. What do you think, Mike? Uh, YouTube holds zero value for you. There's, there's only two things that YouTube can bring for you. The joy of creating videos and sharing what you're doing with people or using it to monetize your content. That's the only thing it does. It is not, it is very, very unlikely that YouTube is going to generate sales for you on an Etsy store the crossover is extremely small. It's practically a waste of time for me to put my Etsy store link in my YouTube links. I almost assure you I've never gotten a click from that. Um, so there's almost no crossover. So the answer to your question is, it's a waste of your time, don't do it. If your goal is to make an Etsy store to sell items to pay for more tools, that is a good approach. And getting your name out there, YouTube will not help that in my opinion. Also, if you start liking YouTube, now you have this other super expensive hobby that you're going to have to start feeding and it's going to take away from your tools. And it just takes so much time to, if you're going to like YouTube is one of those things where there's so many like eyes you have to dot and T's you have to cross for a YouTube video to hit the ground running. It's insane. Like there's so much time that goes into a YouTube video. So don't even waste your time on it unless you're trying to get into content aggressively and I don't even know if being an influencer is a part of that. I think being a YouTuber and being an influencer is two different things. And uh, I think that um, don't do it. <laughs> Pete? Uh, I think you got to focus on the things that are going to bring you in money because that's your main focus right now. And so I like to think of Instagram as a nice low cost of entry, fairly painless thing. Like you just take photos. If you don't want, don't want to do stories, you don't have to do stories. But, you know, if you also enjoy talking to other makers and stuff, I think you're going to find a nice community. So obviously you're probably on Instagram already. You're following us and you found this podcast. So Instagram's pretty easy, but you focus on, focus on Etsy, focus on maybe setting up a site. And as time allows, or as your account grows, then maybe expand to other things. Because if let's say, let's your account, like, let's take uh, Jeff and Jess at Two Most Design. You know, they were on Instagram but they just started, uh, they, they started an Etsy. That was their main thing. They were doing an Etsy. It started taking off. Their Instagram started taking off, but the Etsy was on fire. That was their main way of making money. They also added a site, but they never got rid of Etsy. So they're making money on two of those fronts. Now they've expanded to YouTube. I'm pretty sure they probably have like a Twitter or something, but that's not even important, but it's just to, so you can potentially get that extra set of eyeballs once in a while, you know, here or there. So it's, Think of what's most important, what's actually going to bring you money or joy the soonest, and then add stuff as you find it necessary. I've just added YouTube within the last year because to me, that was more work than it was reward. But now that I'm growing, I actually have both people and sponsors asking like, do you have a YouTube channel? Like, <laughs> I do. It's small though. So now I'm just trying to grow that. Uh, but grow things as, as you need it. Yeah. What do you think? I already answered, but I do want to say that it sounds like that I may have missed an important part of his question. So I want to say ditto to Mike and Pete. That's it. What part was that? Uh, it sounds like he was asking about how to like expand on Etsy. Oh, did he ask that? I didn't hear that. I don't know. That's, ask, what, that's what you guys were answering. I took my headphones he off because to, there was a kid screaming in the background or something. If he needed to expand to Etsy and stuff, yes, you should be. Etsy, honestly, if you're selling stuff. No, he said he wants to expand to Etsy to sell, to make yeah. money for tools, didn't he? Which you should be. Yeah. Yes. That should be, that's if you're focus. trying to do that, that's your, because that's actually bringing you money. That's instant reward for what you're doing. 
everything and it's else not is... nearly as much of a time suck as making content. I mean, t- making really content not. will just suck your time out of your day. So There's if you're just looking to like make some cash, or I'm sorry, tons of people on Etsy that are killing it, like don't even have a YouTube or Instagram. Yeah, they, they're not. There's the crossover is not. It just doesn't exist. They're two separate entities, really. You can use your Instagram uh platform to drive some money over or to drive some eyes over there but realistically etsy's seo is so strong it just it's a ton of animal i've literally gotten more sales on my etsy store from reddit than i have from instagram which really? is saying something it's crazy i guess well you are a reddit lord i am a reddit lord <laughs> all right this next question is from tyler isaacs hey what's up guys tyler here Wood and Whiskers Trading Co. My question this week for the pod is around filling in brad nail holes. So we got some trim on a build and uh, we're wanting to fill those holes in before we finish staining. And I've had some mixed success with some stainable wood filler in the past where it doesn't quite match the base wood. So I wanted your guys' thoughts. Any tips, anything I could use differently? I picked up some plastic wood. (laughs) Plastic wood. And I'm going to give that one a go as well, but let me know what you guys think. Thanks. Yeah. It depends on what your end goal is. Are you going to paint that project? Are you just going to finish it? Are you going to stain it? I think you're he's just gonna keeping f- it the wood color because he's talking about like plastic wood, wood filler. I think he's going Well, the plastic wood, wood doesn't always like match the color of the wood you that you're working with. Answer for both. I'm going to. Please if do. You're, so like I'm currently painting a cabinet and I had to fill in some brad nails. So I used that plastic wood. It works great for that. You're just going to paint over it. You just need something to fill the holes. It doesn't matter. If I'm spraying a clear finish on a project and not staining, which is what I prefer, I'm going to use dust from the actual project itself. Like if I'm making a walnut desk or whatever, I'm going to use walnut dust and glue as a filler. And I usually accomplish that by sanding wet glue into the crack or the, or the crevice or whatever. If it's a large, if it's a large hole, obviously I'm going to fill it with like a a tinted epoxy or CA glue. Um, If I'm staining it, I don't know. I wish I did. Uh, I, I like to do the, the glue and the wood dust uh, trick, but Blue usually repels stain, yeah. stain, so it doesn't work so well. It's like an eyesore. I have yet to find the perfect thing for for filling cracks or brad nails or whatever. And uh, if I'm going to stain it, and that's one of the reasons why I hate stain so much, to be perfectly honest. So if you have an answer for that, let me know. Hit me up, Mike. What do you think? Uh, I actually don't have any insight to that because I have never stained before i'm going to be staining for the first time on this actual this ash herringbone project um but i don't have brad nails i would think that i would answer the same as dan in terms of like filling like the small cracks i kind of actually i actually didn't kind of i definitely learned that wet glue trick from dan sanding over that wet glue it fills stuff well and if you're going to do a clear coat over it it's almost invisible for the most part um but i just bought a product called timber mate that i had heard of from spagnolo And it's got, they got a grain filler, but it's also a wood filler and they actually sell it to match the colors of like every species. I bought their cherry and their walnut and their natural. And I bought the natural because I'm going to be putting that in the cracks and uh, the uh, spray cart tomorrow morning. And then I'm going to be spraying the black over it because I want it to completely hide those joints. Um, And you can put it on the end of... um, uh, I always want to say plywood ingrain, but the edge of the plywood where the plies are visible, you can put the timber mate in that and then just kind of trowel it on and then sand that flush and it will eliminate that joint line when you put the finish over it or a, a painted finish or whatever. So I'm going to be doing black over that. So I'm really excited to try that out because I'd heard of it whenever Spagnolo did his, um, he redid his mom's kitchen cabinets and they were red oak and that's a super wide open grain and he used the timber mate on the grain he rubbed it all in there and then sanded it all flush and then he painted over that and it looked i mean you couldn't tell that it was red oak you couldn't tell it was a grain underneath there so uh it's highly recommended so i'm going to try that out this weekend i'm pretty excited to try it so i would recommend 
that because I know it's water-based and I know people use that for stain. And based on the reviews I saw on Amazon and on their website, uh, like some of the cabinet makers were like, this stuff just makes me money all day because I can fill holes with it and it'll take a stain. So hmm. timber mate, huh? Timber mate. Yeah. I'm going to try I'll it out. Tomorrow. So I got, I got two bottles in now and I've got a third bottle coming. I've got the cherry coming in a few days. Here's my problem so. with that stuff. And then this is just me thinking like I have mm-hmm. no, no way to back this up. There's no experience whatsoever. So like when you buy a pre like colored <laughs> filler, like say you buy a walnut filler, walnut is typically like not just one color. You get a lot of variations in color and you're going to see the difference, like especially in Brad Nail Halls where it's just dots along like the a face frame or whatever. I'm worried about like that. So I'm curious to see what, what do you think? Well, I think glue is also a different color too. So exactly. I think it ends up working out. I mean, I mean, I think you're such a small thing. And if you kind of sand over it, cause I think you put it in there, you travel it in and then you sand over it. I think you're probably mixing some of that stuff up. I think you're probably, I don't know. This is, it just has really high, I'm super highly interested. rated. Yeah. It's highly rated and I've never used it. So I can't really speak to it. I totally get what you're saying. Um, but supposedly it works with stain. That's kind of part of the reason I got the, uh, uh, the natural, because that'll match the ash really well. So I'm going to try that out. Anyway, I don't know. I'll report back. Pete, what about you? Uh, so yes, Dan's trick for the uh, sanding. So just put glue in there and just sand right over it because it just matches the grain. Works super well. Uh, one of my favorite tricks. Thanks, Dan. Um, as far as uh, brad nails go, I'm assuming you're gluing those joints too. So why not pin nailer? It's yeah. a smaller hole to fill. That might be a nice option. Um, and the last thing is if you're going to use any of the wood fillers or the sanding trick with the glue, uh, if you use a pre-stain, it actually takes, the stain takes pretty well because it's kind of bonding to that pre-stain a little bit. So it hides those mistakes, uh, quite well, at least it does on like pine furniture, which in a woodworking school, they use a lot of that for that, like the fun DIY projects. It was like, you know, select pine on a wall. And they would use pre-stain first and then they would stain it after. And any of the glue joints and brad nail holes that were filled actually look pretty good. They, they match pretty well. So pre-stain will help, but I like what Mike's talking about. I want to try that out actually. Not that I use a lot of brad nails and projects for stuff like that, but. I mean, I'm, I'm really interested, not just in, I look, I am sick of having to mix up epoxy for every big crack that I have. Yeah. I'm so tired of it. It takes so much time. I just would, and I've used a product before from a company called uh, Chill Epoxy. They make a product called p and mm-hmm. it legit is a really great product, but it is so expensive. It's so pricey. And Timbermate, what, I, what was really attractive to me is because it's water-based, if it dries up, because that stuff will dry up, you know, you just throw like a spoonful of water in there and mix it up and it reactivates the product. Oh, cool. So it has an unlimited lifetime That's on the dope. bottle. It says unlimited lifetime. So... I'm really interested to try it. It's, it was like 13 bucks for like a little thing of it. that will probably last me. It'll for last you for how, I mean, life. yeah, if you're filling yeah, little I mean, cracks like that. So it, for stuff like that, I'm really interested to try it. So I ordered the three bottles. It was like 40 bucks or whatever for three bottles. So I'm going to try those and see how they work. Um, but okay. like I said, I got walnut and cherry and the natural coming. The natural will work on the plywood and I think the ash, but I also think they have an ash colored one too. So I would love to see, see the walnut one. Cause that one, especially like walnut, if you don't yeah, do it right. A, it's in my mailbox, so I'll try it on something this weekend and shoot a picture of it to you guys because I, I really am interested. So, um, But that's one option. But like I said, I've never tried it. And then Pete's pin nailer thing. I need a pin nailer so bad. I legit think I'm going to buy this Ryobi one and then do the DeWalt so battery attachment. The, because the Ryobi nailers, it. I got to say, man, they're, they're fantastic for what they are. They're heavy as all hell, but they're great. Yeah. Dan, what were you going to say? uh pete did mention why not get, use a pin nailer instead of a brad nailer well there's there are two different things okay a brad nailer has an actual head on the nail so it, it will grab and hold and and put it in place where a pin nailer just like kind of sticks the piece to whatever you're pin nailing there's no grabbing or holding power so yeah, yeah. my thought was like you still throw it in a clamp if there's yeah, i mean if you're gonna throw joint, clamps on it why put nails in it at all that's another good that point, actually. Sense. You know, you is right. Although, I mean, if it's like a end grain flat on a face grain, 
glue joint. Sure. Yeah. So I guess yeah. I just wanted a, to point out the difference between a brad nailer right. and a pin nailer. Domino, bro. I mean, I hate to say it, but like a domino or a biscuit <laughs> joiner, if it's if you're doing like shelves or whatever, yeah, they're pricier options. I mean, although a biscuit joiner is not, and that'll save you on doing these brad nails, and you get a nice clean finish. What you're saving in time doing that is might it might be worth it. Right. It's a time saver. Yep. Oh show. All right. Well, that is our episode. Speaking of for show, long. this show's done. Oh sh- nailed it. That was so good, Pete. Nailed Dad it. Nailed it. Pin you nailed it. Arb- you re- you won the Arbor Stravaganza episode or whatever that one is. Uh we don't have a show title. This is I have nothing written down. Um, this is not good. This is bad. They hate us because they ain't us. Okay. Is that what we're going with? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, Dan didn't like Absolutely it. Absolutely not. Really- uh okay well anyway let's, put my foot let's down roll. on that one let's let's roll out of this thing uh go give the show five star reviews keep sharing the podcast in your stories and with your friends and your family and your aunt your grandma um and she then uh us. you know we just really appreciate your guys's what oh uh, the, the really... camera wouldn't focus on me sorry <laughs> i thought my eyes were going out again <laughs> uh we really appreciate all your guys' support we love it like we love it. We love you, this community. We love you guys very much. So thank you so much for uh, for supporting us and keeping this show going. We really appreciate it very much. We're really excited about 2021, and uh, I mean we're almost four months into 2021 now, which is insane. But we got to started. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep keep bringing in the guests and uh, keep switching the show up and keeping it fun and lively. So big thank you to all you who uh, help us keep it going. So we will talk to you all soon. Is there anything I'm missing here? Go check us, us out on Patreon. On, Shoot us DMs. Yeah, Patreon. Hit us on the, the Instagram. Check out our YouTubes. Go check out the RustyTool.com. Yes. Big thank you to our giveaway sponsor, Macbeth. We really appreciate you guys very much. And we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Long time. Kill it.